Hey there, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Free Webinar Wednesdays. This is Eric Cook over at WSI Digital, and today is Wednesday, February 12th, 2020. I'm really excited to be back. I took a couple weeks off, had some travel, had some conferences. Uh, luckily, at one of those conferences, I got to actually be face-to-face -face with our guest speaker today. So we're going to introduce Ben here in just a second, but before we get officially rolling, thanks to those of you that are joining the show live. If you uh, would like to ask a question, comment, thought, or share an observation, I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of things to talk about, even in the pre-show. Ben and I were just rattling off a handful of things that would likely spawn uh, maybe uh, another show down the road very easily. But as we start talking about stuff, if you've got uh, some thoughts that you'd like to share, by all means, please feel free to use the chat. Some of you have already done that and said hello and uh, hello back at you. Great to hear everybody. Uh, one of the great parts about doing a live show is uh, the interaction. Uh, but for those of you that, uh, well, I guess if you're not here live, you're not going to be able to hear this message. But uh, if you would like to share today's show, with friends, colleagues, coworkers, or anybody else that you think needs to hear this. All shows are recorded and made available out at freewebinarwednesdays.com. So you can just hop out there, find the link, and share it, and uh, be able to catch the show after the fact and uh, maybe relive some of the nuggets of wisdom that uh, Ben is going to drop on us today. So with, uh, with that out of the way, oh, I also would be remiss as a dutiful and loving husband not to give my beautiful bride uh, a shout out because today is her birthday and I'm not going to tell you how old she is. I will say she's a little older than me, but I tease her about that publicly and she's cool with it. Um, and I don't think she really listens to my webinars anyway, but to my lovely wife, Alicia, I would like to wish you a happy birthday and here's to many more together. So with that little bit of sappiness out of the way, and I can tell Ben, you're probably just rolling your eyes going, oh my God, did he really just do that? Um, I, uh, I I know you're a sappy guy when it comes to your wife as well. So it you can probably great. appreciate that. Wasn't it awesome? <laughs> so there's the man, there's the voice. So Mr. Ben Pankinen from Social Assurance. Ben and I have known each other I'll say a long time. I don't remember exactly when we met. We were even asked that question when we were in Nebraska together. Um, but I'll just say we know each other from a long time back. You are the proud uh, owner of a WSI cycling jersey, and I am the proud owner of a number of um, social assurance t-shirts, one of which I had on the other day, which was a really cool coffee mug, and I was at a coffee shop, and people didn't even know that it was a logo until I explained it to them. And then they thought that was even cooler. So I think of you often when I wear your cool apparel, but Ben is joining us today from Lincoln, Nebraska. And we're going to talk about a topic that basically got in front of me, thanks to LinkedIn and the whole concept of specializing and focusing on something that you know really well versus trying to be the jack of all trades. Um, and like I said, there's probably going to be a ton of different directions to go. But with that long-winded and somewhat disjointed introduction, Ben, thank you so much for joining Free Webinar Wednesdays today. And I'm really looking forward to chatting with you for the next hour. Well, hey, thanks, Eric. I, you, you know, it, I think this is going to be a really fun one. Um, you know, when we kind of think about some of our conversations that we have, I think a lot of this really just flows well in together, together in this kind of topic of thinking how we stay on top of things and, you know, uh, different interests and, you know, things that we have going on. Uh, so when we think about kind of where, where hey, this wait a minute. You, 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 you got to go back to that title slide. So I did mention social assurance and there's a picture of you, but you got to introduce the little puppy dog. You got to oh, tell yeah. everybody. So this is, yeah, this you, you got to do the intro the there, man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, uh, completely. Uh, this is Rigo the Rocket. He does have an older brother, but his older brother doesn't usually get to come to the office. Uh, Jacques uh, usually stays at home because he's uh, he's not so keen on traveling. Um, but Rigo loves to come to our office. Um, 
he uh, so he sits on our couch at the office some of the time and um, kind of warms up the office. Our, our productivity might go down, but you know morale goes way up when Rigo comes to visit. Um, Absolutely, he is Rigo the Rocket on Instagram. If you do want to follow him, uh, so nice. He mostly, you know, he doesn't really care much about likes, but he uh, he just likes to share what he's up to. Yeah, well, if likes equated to treats, then he probably would care about likes. So we've got That's the cook true. dogs on Facebook, and uh, you know, we've got lots of people that follow, and sometimes we get to meet up with some folks, and uh, usually treats come. So uh, it it does translate, but not as easily. But anyway, I just had to make yeah. sure we got Rigo uh, announced there. So no, cool. no proper proper introduction and shout out to Absolutely. my wife. It's not her birthday, but it is Valentine's Day coming up. So I can't, you know, I can't forget that. So I, you know, um, don't forget that one either, Eric. You're, you're not off the hook, even though you mentioned your birthday. Yeah, I kind of got double whammy. So, uh, but it is what it is. And before we jump into your slides, I just want to give you a quick, I, I mentioned social assurance. I know we've got bankers that join the show and they may probably already be familiar, but for folks that might not know what social assurance is, you want to just kind of give people some perspective on what you guys do and the cool stuff that um, that you guys provide. Yeah, super quick background. I used to run a, basically an IT security company, and I was working with a lot of community bankers, specifically like the CIO types, you know, the, the people that drink Mountain Dew and stuff in the in the back room and work on firewall rules and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I, that was, you know, sort of a lot of my network, a lot of good friends in that space. And one of them, I was sitting down with him and I said, what's going to happen when social media starts to overtake community banking and he says it's never going to happen <laughs> and i said well just level with me you probably said the same thing about a fax machine or about email, know, email. <laughs> you know oh, all yeah. of these sort of things. and so you know we'd put in solutions of course to email right to do filtering and spam filtering and antivirus all those sorts of things and i was like look um you know i like software i love building software um i love doing you know marketing area like I think there's a really good fit here for all of these community institutions because, you know, back at that time I was saying, you know, I think visits to the branch are going to go down. Like, I think people aren't going to go physically to the, some of the same places, right? Um, you know, retail, we, we kind of thought might start declining at that time. Um, but, you know, banking felt even more that way where I said, well, how are you yeah. going to stay connected, stay in front of them? And so that was really kind of the impetus for uh, for social assurance. So we do a software uh, product um, that um, over a thousand banks uh, in the country use. Um, I'll talk about a little bit of uh, a side hustle that uh, that I have as well uh, related to cool. that in the education space. Um, but um, but yeah, that's really a the thing that we've been focused on for uh, the last cool. uh, eight, eight plus years. Awesome. Well, you guys do a great job and I'm always pleased to be able to refer folks over to you. And even though some folks that are joining free webinar Wednesdays might not be in the community banking space, I think the statement of social media taking over community banking, you could replace community banking with any industry and social media certainly is an area that people are spending more time in. It's creating more distractions and it's requiring you to be, and kind of into the conversation for today, figuring out how you get out of your comfort zone and be comfortable in other areas, or do you stay in your lane and find other people and where that hybrid is? So that was a, a great background. And now I will let you click to the next slide and you can reveal the LinkedIn post that brought this conversation to fruition. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Eric, uh, Eric trolled me on LinkedIn, right? Um, you know, really, this was kind of the key phrase I started with was, you know, I've been told for a long time in my career, like, hey, you know, you should, um, you should like go deep on this one thing. <laughs> and um, I, I guess my interests were sort of more diverse. And I felt like um, always when I was told that I was like, I don't know, you know, like I started out uh, business and computer science in college, I uh, started programming a little bit. Um, and thought, hey, you know, this is kind of fun. Like I get to, you know, sort of make things happen out of nothing. Uh, and that was really fun. Um, but, you know, I remember hearing people say, well, yeah, you just got to like jump into that and do like, you got to really get this number of hours in programming to just be 
a great programmer. Uh, well, as it turned out, I kind of found out later that I wasn't really that good at programming. <laughs> like I was, I could make it happen. I could make things, you know, happen with code, um, but I was a whole lot better at sort of helping a team and communicating uh, with software developers. Um, you know, these are the people that, you know, some of which work for me now, they're a whole lot better at math um, than I ever was. And, um, you know, it really helps to, to broaden that understanding. Well, and they've reinvented so, yeah, math too. So I've got nieces and nephews that are in school now and they show me their math problems. And I'm like, that's not how I did two plus two, but okay, sure. So yeah, the, the evolution is shifting everywhere. No, you're completely right. I have my nephew through the public school system here, and he, um, I said, hey, you know, I know we're we're doing some of this stuff. I work a little bit with the school district, and I said, hey, let's go, you know, sort of do this event. And you know, about halfway through, he turns to me and he goes, yeah, these robots are cool, but um, do you want to race in code? And I was like, oh man, buddy, you are 12 years old, but uh, I'm gonna bring it. And um, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, it was a humbling experience because he's uh, he's actually really good at it, and I'm like, oh, this is taking me back, and I am uh, I'm slow. Like you know, kind of like I felt like the big lineman that's trying to chase this you know this young guy who's who's quick, and I was like, wow, this is um, this is a really humbling experience. Oh, too funny, too funny. Yeah. So so a little bit of what I thought would be kind of fun to talk about, you know, like you know, even for our company, right? And so regardless of what you're marketing or whatever, you know, like our focus is very narrow in, in many ways of what we do, but it also kind of has this broadness to it that what makes, you know, good social content or what makes things work um, aren't necessarily all that super narrow a lot of times so it, and it takes when we start thinking of ourselves as like innovators it's a different pitch like i was doing one of those uh get to you things you know we we're in our room uh, a while ago and i don't know what made me say it but they were going around the room and they said you know those those get to know you hey would you say your name what company you work for and then uh like what kitchen utensil you are and so, I, you know, the, the first person goes and I happen to be the second person. So the first person goes and it, as they're going, I didn't know what to say. But the first person says, well, I'm a, a it's like a steak knife because, you know, I would like to cut to the point or something like that. And it comes to me and I go, well, I'm a butter knife because I'm not really that sharp, but I'm pretty smooth. <laughs> and uh, I just, just like yeah, came out and, and immediately I thought, you know, like that's part of what we have happen when we're thinking a little bit more about the, the innovative nature of what we are. And that's, that's a little bit more of who I am. Right. So a lot of times we're told, hey, go be the scalpel because like you have to go do this very specific task. But what we find is sometimes early in our career, I think we have to do that. Like we have to hone a craft well enough that then we get asked to be more general. And I think that's one of the things that we, you know, we start learning is like, you know what, like if I'm working with um, an agency like yours, or, you know, I'm working with experts in certain areas, like I can't be I can't be the scalpel in every area. I can only be that in, you know, a couple areas. And so it sort of teaches us that we have to start as, as our career changes and shifts. Um, you may end up being somebody who really does focus on the scalpel for your entire career, but more often than not, we end up kind of having to, to wear a lot of hats. Uh, I don't know if you've experienced that much, Eric. Well, and it's, and I'm still getting over the brilliance of that butter knife uh, comment, so I, I'm I'm just recalibrating my uh, perspective here. But that was that was pretty good. Um, yeah, and you know, I guess one of the things that I just jotted down that I'm sure we'll talk about is when we start talking about specialization and, but then also being able to do a lot of different things and kind of embracing the whole cleaver mentality versus the precision of a scalpel. Um, you know, you guys are specialized at social assurance in the banking and community banking vertical. So in one sense, 
there is that specialization. Now you've got a little side hustle in education, but you don't get into law firms, you don't go into doctor's offices. So there's that specialization from a banking perspective. But then once you get below that, there's maybe a more general list of doing a lot of things and being able to explore. And I think that's where I know for me, it sometimes is difficult to determine when you've specialized too much or if you're not specializing enough. Because if you decided to branch off and start going into law firms because a local law firm within Lincoln approached you, do you go out of your out of your out of your lane to help them? Or is banking where your you know, your top level specialization is? And then if a bank approached you and said, hey, would you be interested in X, Y, or Z, even if it's not something that you've done before, maybe that's where your flexibility and exploratory nature can, can really flourish. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, and I think, I think you're embracing that tension really well, and I think I, I have that tension a lot of days <laughs> where um, I get sort of asked, and so one of the things that I've sort of learned to do over – um, you know, over my journey as, you know, an entrepreneur, as a technologist, as a marketer, is that I've sort of learned that um, I have to let myself be curious. And, and in those moments, it might not mean that it's something that I need to do, but sometimes I need to be really curious. Like, I, you know, I got asked to be on the board of our hospital system here in, in Lincoln. And I thought, you know what, like, I I really don't understand healthcare well, um, but for me, having you know a few hours every quarter plus you know some emails and you know thinking through things, it it does something for my mentality to understand uh, a very different model than I do every day. So and and what what it sort of helps me to do is when I sit down with uh, you know some doctors and I say, hey, what like, so what is it that you're focused on? And they start telling me, well, you know, we were educated in the area of pain and here's, here's why we ended up with the crisis we do. Um, all of a sudden it starts to open up my mind to a very different mentality and it started, helps me to think differently. And so I just really have, have treasured those moments. And another way I thought that we could say it is sort of like, there's an old Greek saying that says, you know, the fox thinks about many things or the hedgehog thinks of one big thing. And it's, it's this old philosophy that kind of says, hey, you know what? Like, it's not that we can't be a fox, um, you know, and be sort of cunning, but a fox oftentimes will overthink things and they're not as decisive. Right? They Where a hedgehog just sort of says, I got one idea, here's where I go. Um, where sometimes it slows you down when you have too many things to think about and you try to be good at all of the things. Um, so I fall into both of those categories at times, right? Sometimes I feel like, well, you know, I can think about a bunch of different things, um, but I also kind of have this overarching thought. And so I think it embraces that tension that you're describing, which I experience a lot, which is that caught in between, oh, I feel like I need to learn all of these things to, hey, you know what? I might not be good at all of those things. Maybe I just need to sort of direct other people to help do these things. Exactly. So yeah, I think there's a few there's a few different ways to think of it. Um, one of them in you know in marketing, I start to think about the role of a marketer today, uh, regardless of the industry you're in. So I, again, I I work primarily with um, financial marketers, people who are you know in community and regional financial institutions that are um, they're having a lot thrown at them. But every marketer in every size company is starting to experience this sort of tension that says, I, I'm in a much more elastic role. Like I'm having to communicate things like analytics and math, and I'm having to also understand you know, new platforms, new ways of, of marketing. The channels have changed dramatically. And what we're seeing is in the last 10, 15 years, you know, we used to think about it like, hey, you know what? Maybe we should start using this thing called email, right? Because you know, I think that's a new area. 
but you know, as Eric and I were talking before the call, Eric's like, Hey, have you spent any time on TikTok? And I'm like, yes, uh, admittedly, I am a middle-aged dude who does have a TikTok account and have spent some time on there. Um, but really like it's, it's like every other new channel and we need to spend some time on it. And, um, and then we talked about a couple more platforms. Like there's, the, the amount that we have to learn quickly is is really escalating. Um, so so when I think about just just social media, right? Understanding TikTok, I think, is something that marketers should have at least a casual understanding of. Um, it's not necessarily that you have to be great at being being viral on it personally. Um, it's not that you have to know every video or every meme on there. But like knowing how that platform works is pretty valuable. Um, and you know, understanding the style at which videos are shot for TikTok, I think is really important for understanding how you might have better videos on Instagram or Facebook or other platforms that you might be more focused on as a business, um, because that's what you're seeing. Um, that's what you're seeing as far as videos. So Eric, you and I talked a little bit about a couple other platforms when we were having that conversation. And you know, part of what's helped me to expose, I, I referenced that I've got a sort of, a, you could call it a side hustle, but it's actually a, a little bit bigger than that. We, um, uh, I, a friend of mine asked me uh, just over uh, two years ago uh, to come speak at his conference, which was for education. Um, and uh, the funny thing about it was, it was kind of like a regional conference uh, with about, um, a uh, hundred high school students and those hundred high school students um, you know wanted to talk about social media and so we started doing some exercises with them where I said okay well we're gonna have you making some social media content for your school uh, we're gonna have you sort of collaborating a little bit and, you know I kind of thought it was gonna be one of these conversations that was about an hour long and then I would just sort of go on <laughs> go on my way um, but about halfway through what happened was there were four sophomore girls in the front row with their matching MacBook Airs that had been issued by the school right uh, so they they were supposed to make social media content that day for their high school. Um, so these four sophomore girls, you could tell they were they were the right ones picked, right? They were the uh, they were sitting in the front. They were definitely like the A students. Were definitely like listening on every word and were taking notes and they were ready to go. And I said, well, how are you making social media content for your school? And they, one of them turned their laptop over and she said, oh, I don't know if you are, know our instructor, you know, our teacher, but he, um, he just gave us the username and password for the school's social media accounts. And immediately I kind of took a breath <laughs> and thought, right? <laughs> like, what is wrong here? Oh, so, nothing at all. Yeah, yeah. So I, I follow up with my buddy and I said, okay, you know education. This is the, this is your jam. This is what you work in. Like, what do they do? And then he said, well, that's kind of what they do. They either like trade the password or they tell kids stay away from it. And I said, well, well, but don't, I mean, are school newspapers still a thing? Like, how does that work? And he goes, well, no, I mean, you know, they kind of are, but like, you know, basically it's either adults making the social media content or they're just trading passwords. And I was like, all right, here, dude, like just, you know, <laughs> I've got some software, just like ask them if they'll use this. And so pretty soon, you know, now fast forward um, almost two years, we work with uh, close to 10,000 students across the country that are creating social media content for their school. And, uh, and they're using some of our technology that we licensed over uh, to a separate company to do that. But it, it, it helps me because I get to you know, go into classrooms every once in a while. So sometimes I'll be taking like a bank marketing trip. I was down in uh, Oklahoma City visiting uh, a few of the banks we work with in that area. And um, I just reached out to one of our, our class intercom is the other company. I just reached out to him and said, hey, I, you know, can I stop in and talk to your classroom? And all of a sudden I'm, you know, taking a tour of a school. I have to kind of switch gear a little bit. So I have to kind of like, you know, leave the suit jacket in the car and throw a hoodie on and go into a classroom. Um, but it's a really fun experience to start to work with students to understand, hey, the way that they engage on social media is different. And it's also just like my nephew, it's super fast. Like the way that they learn things and the way that they kind of accelerate their process just really quick. Um, Cause they don't have these barriers of what would happen to me if I 
started a new account on a social media. They, like they don't have that sort of fear associated with right. it. Which is really, it's really fun to watch. So let's talk a little bit about that. And I'm, I'm going to say a couple of old guys. And when I say that, I mean, I'm like way older than you are, but we've got a couple of old guys um, that have this mentality and this perception of specialization versus not specializing and kind of what we started talking about on LinkedIn, thanks to your post. Does that generation, when you're talking to the next, uh, the next generation of the workforce because of the speed and flexibility and maybe decreased barriers or resistance, do they even think about stuff like specialization or are they just going wherever and just letting it flow? And, you know, obviously there's pros and cons to that as well, but how are you seeing their perspective of what we're talking about? Would they look at this conversation like, crossed eyeballs and like what are you guys talking about what is you know you know what i mean yeah no it's, it's a great question so you know when i go into a, a high school um and talk about social media content right like um do i talk about linkedin regularly no like um yeah. as a high schooler i don't <laughs> necessarily see value in that but the the method for how i post on linkedin um, is is the, exactly what I talk about when I go. If if you look at my posts on LinkedIn, what you'll see is, um, including the one you commented on, they're highly personal posts. Um, so those affected me personally. Now you'll also see that I sprinkle in uh, some things about what we do. So you know, like um, you know, I'll make a highly personalized post, and then that you know, the sort of every once in a while I'll sprinkle in the ones that I'll be like, hey, by the way, you know, we're doing a webinar on um, CRA and community regulations and compliance, right? Now, no yep. secret, I don't get a ton of engagement on those posts, but I get a lot of engagement when I talk about something personal. I think the one you uh, referenced here, I think when I screenshotted it, it looked like it had, you know, 12, 13,000 uh, views on it. Um, so yeah, that's, you pretty, crushed it. that's a, yeah, that, those are pretty good, but most of my personal posts, uh, would exceed, uh, 10,000, um, yep. views. And, and it's because they're highly personal. So part of what we'll talk about with, with like a high school student is actually the same thing I talk about with bankers who are looking to get, uh, to get involved in those platforms, which is, Hey, um, the way you tell a story and the way you engage in a story is highly personal. And if you make your workplace personal, um, then you have a huge value to offer other people. Like, so when you start out a post like this one, here's what I've learned, or in that case, the worst advice I've ever given, right? Um, so every high school student, we don't have to explain this to a high school student because we'll say, hey, look, um, things that are black or white, I love it. I hate it. Those are high emotions, high contrast. Those get success on social media. If you throw out something like I'll see a lot of adults do where they'll say, you know, like it or not, I'm experiencing this tension between these like like they're, they're sort of like vanilla posts in the middle. Right. Like they're sort of saying, right. um, you might like this, but I kind of like this. You say, you know what? Um, you need to use stronger language when you're posting. Like the thing I hate is, right? Start out your LinkedIn post with things like that and you'll start to experience a whole lot more traffic because people can react to it. Um, you know, we say the thing that I hate about, you know, lending or the thing I hate about, um, it can be very boring topics, but when you bring emotion and personal life into it, uh, it becomes you know much more engaging. Yep. Now there's going to be a certain camp, especially in the banking world, because you and I have met many of them over the years that aren't comfortable blending personal with business. And there's some of that mentality. My thought is those are going to become extinct and they'll eventually retire and the next generation to remain relevant is going to have to be able to embrace that. That's one of the reasons why even with our business up until like the last probably year and a half, even as a digital agency, we really didn't even have a Facebook page for our WSI agency. It was all me on Facebook and people got to know Eric Cook 
as the person and they knew yeah. I was a cyclist. They knew I shaved my legs. They knew I liked to <laughs> play with golden retrievers and I was a geek, you know, so whether you like that or not, but the, I mean, is there any solace to the traditional business person that wants to keep those things separate or has that horse left the barn and we don't have the luxury of not allowing people to look behind the curtain any longer? <laughs> You know, what I would tell people is it's a lot about who you are when you're in front of a client, right? Um, the way you build relationships uh, for your business to be as successful as it is now is probably how you're going to build that on social media channels, right? So so if I if I go in and work with a, you know, a bank president who says, hey, um, you know, the thing is we build really good relationships here. I'll say, okay, that's that like that's phenomenal. That's a great place to start from, right? Like, like that's that's really good. Um, and then then you'll sort of hear this uh, apology and say, but I don't think that you know. We, so we don't really want to do this social media thing. I'll say, well, well, wait a second. Like the way I know Eric Cook online and the way I know him in person are identical. Like like we know each other. We're friends. This just gives me a, a better amplification, right? This this gives me that amplification. So I'll tell the story. Sometimes I, I um, you know, I'm about a, I was driving to visit a, a, a client of mine, and she's about an hour away uh, from my home. So I go out to visit her. Uh, we go sit down at Starbucks, and she says, "Oh, hey, before we get going, I wanted to tell you." Um, uh, I was just at a dinner party this past weekend, and we were talking about your dogs. I said, "Oh, okay." It was a, you know clearly post about my dogs on social media, and so she said, "Yeah, they just came up. It was kind of funny." And I was like, "Oh, that's funny." Anyway, then she says, "We sit down, and I kid you not, she says, okay, so Ben, is it really worth it for us to put lenders on social media platforms?'" And I said. Uh, she goes, is there any value in a business sense to doing this? And I said, well, actually, I said there was a dinner party last uh, weekend in which I was not attending. It was 60 miles from my home, and they were talking about my dogs. Um, but this is actually a business relationship that I have. And she starts, she goes, okay, okay, I got it. I got it. Like, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I said, well, no, like, yep. it's it might be personal, but when we're doing that, that's the way I build relationships. If you're the type of salesperson that builds personal relationships in person, yep. then you're going to do the same online. Absolutely. So it's uh, it's good to hear the dog theme continuing. So <laughs> you, you, we're in case you can't figure it out, folks, uh, we're both very big dog people. So. <laughs> uh, four-legged furry children uh running the roost here so very really cool suspicious of cats but you know i'm i'm totally about dogs uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're just shady uh, you just never know what they're thinking so I, a, a couple thoughts to to sort of give you when we start thinking about what does it take to learn um i think it's interesting to think about um is this something that we give ourselves permission to do? I think is one of the things. Uh, so, so one of the things that I've tried to adopt, um, you know, this past weekend, um, you know, my wife and I are, you know, running different directions, doing a lot of different things. And one of the things we've sort of realized is we kind of have to just schedule things out. So like my Saturday afternoon, I just sort of scheduled myself out. And what I did was I just kind of scheduled myself to be at a coffee shop and I have, um, this was one of the webinars or presentations that I needed to do over the next couple of weeks, but I had about five presentations. And so I'm like, I just need to, like, rather than kind of sitting and looking at PowerPoint and thinking, how do we sort of walk through these? I just took probably two hours to be lost on a Saturday afternoon. Now, I know that's tough and, you know, with families and all, all that sort of stuff to find those little times. And sometimes you have to do it in your office. Um, I get that. But some of the time, you know, rather than jumping right into creating some new content, sometimes we have to kind of get lost in something. Um, sometimes it, it can be a very productive thing. Um, my wife is a is a cook. Uh, she's actually 
um, becoming a certified chef as well. Um, but she's in, you know, but her background's all as a dietitian. And so um, for her, sometimes that's cooking something. Uh, which is a fantastic hobby uh, for me, <laughs> um, because I was going to say uh, you get to reap the rewards of that, don't you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but you know, for her, she's like, I need to go cook something, and I'm like, yeah, I, oh, yeah, yeah, of course you do. But but um, you know, for some of us, it might be a hobby, it might be golf, it might be some of those. But letting our mind really wander and think, um, but then also picking up things that sort of seem abstract in our learning um, can be really helpful. Um, you know, travel's another way that, you know, my wife and I try to focus on, hey, like, let's let's travel to somewhere that kind of stretches us a little bit or, you know, um, doesn't even have to be far, right? Like it can be an hour away, um, but like just kind of like getting out of what is comfortable sometimes um, yep. is just something I have to think about consciously. Well, and I go back to a comment you made earlier uh, in our conversation about accepting the position for a board seat with the local hospital, stretching yourself, getting outside of your comfort zone, didn't know a lot about the healthcare industry. When doing that, my gut tells me, even though you're, you know, not going to quit your job and go back to medical school, that there could have been things through that discussion that you had with those physicians that got you thinking of things differently. And now all of a sudden something ends up making its way into your existing business that you wouldn't have otherwise thought of just like spending time at a coffee shop or traveling to a place or walking down a cool little alleyway with some creative little graphics like you, you see on the picture on the screen right there. So, um, yeah, this is, this is actually, it's, it's all uh, meshing together. Yeah, I know you're right. This, I have this alley, actually, I took that photo last week. Um, it's, um, this is around the corner from my office. So if I walk one way, I walk a little bit shorter, but if I walk a half a block more, I walk down this alley, which is super fun. Um, it's really cool at night. They have like lights up in those, um, up in the top area too. So it's all kind of lit with crazy colors, but like letting yourself kind of have those moments um, is just a really helpful and kind of, you know, we've been talking more and more in our culture about, you know, mental health and things, but, you know, even if it's not something that you feel like, I'm, I'm not a person who's, who naturally grabs, gravitates towards depression, but um, I, I am somebody who, uh, if I'm not thinking creatively, um, I, you know, I'll, I'll stagnate or I'll feel like I'm not moving forward. Yeah. And that's that's yep. something I have to do. So letting myself just walk the extra half block so that I can walk down the really cool and weird alley and you know, I don't know, appreciate some art or laugh at it or whatever, um, is, is just a really helpful thing. Yeah. Very cool. So a few other things that we try to do, um, you know, we've been uh actually at our last all company meeting, um, we talked uh a little bit more about learning. And just how do we learn? Um, so these are just, I, I literally uh, a couple of days ago just pulled uh, some of the most recent conversations that we, we use a tool called Slack for a lot of our communications internally, um, but uh, which just, uh, by the way, went public. Um, uh, great company, um, doing really well. But, you know, these were some conversations that we had uh, in Slack. And I think it's important that you have people around you who are curious. And so these are a couple, couple employees who are communicating about it. Uh, one of them, uh, Stacy was posting about uh, one of her lender friends had messaged about this because it was a, a pertained to the Super Bowl ad um, where she was kind of, you know, here's our local lender. Uh, one of her friends uh, was communicating about what the local lender is like compared to Rocket Mortgage. Um, and then, you know, we have a, uh, Courtney does our fun facts of the day at the office, uh, which is always uh, kind of fun. Just really random stuff. Uh, this one was actually about one of uh, our coworkers uh, and who I did not know until this moment was a uh, ordained minister, um, but fun story. Yeah, I thought you were we talking about Saved by the Bell. That's, oh, that, that's that where my, too. That, that's where I went. So I, I was thinking Saved by the Bell. So, but. It makes it more relevant since he's in your office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super relevant. And then, you know, of course, Adam's, you know, watching the Oscars and was like, oh, hey, um, you know, here's something you didn't know about uh, Billie Eilish, right? Um, and so, you know, when we have those kind of like random conversations, it's kind of like your water cooler conversations. But when you can kind of curate those and learn from them, um, I think, you know, even though they seem like really random pieces of information, they help us to 
to challenge ourselves to be learning more and trying to share those things with our uh, the people around us. I just got a uh, a comment in the chat. Oh no, save by the bell. I'm gonna I'm gonna save my screech reference for later. But yes, I totally dropped the save by the bell reference uh, on a free webinar Wednesdays. So good catch there, Kenneth. <laughs> nice, Kenneth. Um, yes, my um, my wife calls me out every once in a while if uh, she thinks that I'm dressing a little too like like I'm trying too hard. She'll be like, "You just want to be Zach Morris today." Um, so, <laughs> totally. Totally got it. Um, oh, that's hilarious. Too funny. Yeah, no, I think I think those are you know fun ways to to think about it. Um, yeah, another thing, you know, a few tips for for bankers and you know organizations of uh, of all types is you know one of the things we have to like as somebody who wants to learn new things, like it also forces us to have this this challenge of oh we've got to humble ourselves enough to know like we don't know the answer. <laughs> like we we don't know this answer to something, and I think that's a really important step that. Um, you know, it starts to to make us more of community leaders when we're going to somebody and saying, hey, I, I'm not really sure uh, what to do here or I'm not sure what's next. Um, I think too often we approach meetings in particular where we go into a meeting and we say, OK, here's what I want the outcome to be. And a lot of times we have to go into a meeting and say, Hey, uh, what I want to understand is what your objectives are, and then I'll try to, uh, I'll try to help you get there. Um, and when we kind of take that philosophy, a lot of times uh, it really changes that dynamic too. Cool. Um, I'm, had this I'm curious, and yeah. just before we continue, I know we're kind of rounding the corner here. Um, aside from the uh, say by the bell, and I did get one comment about, did you just say you shaved your legs? And yes, I did mention that. But I'm a cyclist, <laughs> not any other reason that your that, imagination that okay. might go. It makes it okay. So uh, anyway, I'll, I'll. This is being recorded, so I have to be careful of what I say because it's going to be preserved for prosperity's sake. I'll move on. Um, but I was curious for those of you that are attending this live. Um, as we've kind of given some examples of getting outside of the box or pushing creativity, I'm curious if you are experiencing any of that and have a specific example that you'd like to share in the chat of where you've done something like what Ben is giving an example of, of the, the board or go for a walk or how do you get outside and cause your mind to break free and be exposed to some new stuff. So just, I'll keep an eye on the chat, see if we get any comments, but uh, I wanted to throw that out there. So continue, Ben. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's a great question. Um, I'd love to, I'd love to hear some ideas. I had one yesterday. Um, my alma mater is a, um, is a small uh, liberal arts college in Nebraska. And uh, so, you know, I, was meeting with some of them. They're trying to do some more stuff with computer science, and you know, kind of we're we're a hope, of course, you know, wanting to connect with them because it's um, it's always hard to find uh, software developers. And so anyway, we're um, we're having lunch yesterday, and they said, well, "What do we do, you know, as a college to kind of like 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 what what should we be doing?" And I said, "Well, one of the biggest challenges with any organization of size, and you know, they only have you know two thousand students or a little over two thousand students." Um, so small, small college, but I said, you know, every time we get an institution that's growing, um, it's really hard for them to think entrepreneurially. I said, you know, you have a campus that's an hour away that you're struggling to get a lot of enrollment up on. I said, you know what, um, you know, you've told me, hey, we built that other campus. Um, I said, what about busing kids from this campus to that campus? What about um, going and surveying the C students at your college and ask them what they think? Because they probably have part-time jobs, and they, you probably don't listen to them very often. But we're told that we're going to work for C students. Like, why don't you go ask them? Because um, they'll give you real honest opinions about things. Where your A students follow the rules, and they probably won't give you very honest opinions. They'll give you politically correct answers because that's how they got A's. Um, and you know, so when you when you kind of like respond to organizations with a counter thought. You know, hey, we tried this; it doesn't work. And you flip it the other direction. All of a sudden, you say, "Well, maybe it, 
maybe the opposite works. <laughs> it's not, it's not rocket right. science, but you know, a lot of times as marketers, that's what we're doing, right? We're just flipping stuff upside down and saying, Hey, maybe this works. Cool. We got a comment. So somebody bit on my request. So, um, goes to a happy place picture on his credenza brings him peace and back to a time less stress more centered um says the picture connects with others young and old more of an abstract abstract not real any specific meaning but just something that works so you know don't even necessarily have to leave the house or the office if there's something i know that there's a couple of podcasts and audio um apps uh that you can also use that will help you get away um i've had people that have told me that meditation is something that would be helpful i have a hard time sitting still uh i don't know if you've ever gotten into that but being able to just zone yourself out my mind races way too fast to do any of that meditation yoga stuff but for some people it works i don't know if that's anything that you've ever experienced ben yeah, um, I, I'm not, uh, I too am not great at meditating, although I do still try it. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's something that, um, you know, we try to learn and, you know, being mindful, you know, taking those moments like, you know, you're biking or doing exercise, things like that, where I can kind of put my mind in a different spot. I, I love the concepts of, you know, what are triggers that you can use? Like in my office, I have, um, my wife gave me this uh, old cover of a uh, Time Life magazine. Um, and it is uh, from the 60s. Uh, I was found at her, her family estate sort of thing. And uh, she said, you need to have this. And I was like, this is the most amazing thing because it's the cover of a life magazine, uh, but it's got an astronaut and it says we're leaving for the moon. And I said, you know, I've always seen this stuff that say we landed on the moon but never though we're leaving for the moon, right? And um, you know, I've used that in some presentations to say one of the things we forget a lot of times when we're doing social media or story creation or stuff is realizing that we need to tell the beginning of the story and that we need to help people to see where we're going, not where we've been, you know? It's not always a history lesson. It's more about, hey, where are we going to go? And um, that's one of those key reminders right on my wall, right behind my desk uh, that sort of reminds me that, hey, we're, we gotta go somewhere. Like, where, where are we gonna go? <laughs> so yeah, I love that reminder. That's a really cool thing. So, sweet. So in the now last talked, uh, uh, few minutes, yep, go ahead. I think I know what oh, you're going to say, but I'll let you say it. We talked about some some different social media channels that I think are kind of fun <laughs> to talk about, too, uh, right before we were getting started. Um, we Read talked my about mind. TikTok, right? We talked about um, some other ones uh, as well. Maybe you want to pick those up. Well, you were uh, – so, so the one that you mentioned that – and I oftentimes will refer to – ethereal content which basically is the whole people think of uh, snapchat it, content that disappears it just poof goes bye bye uh when i say ethereal content everybody thinks of snapchat and facebook tried to buy snapchat they wouldn't and so i oftentimes will say well facebook just did a little r d which most people equate to research and development but i use it as rip off and duplicate and that's what they did with the stories on instagram being disappearing content to Snapchat, but you dropped a little nugget of R and D that Facebook did related to TikTok and a little app. Uh, so you want to maybe talk a little bit about Lasso and um, cause I'd not really, I think I'd, I'd seen it, but it was one of those passing glimpses of, oh, I'm not going to use TikTok, so I wouldn't use that. But um, yeah, so that one's got me interested. And then the other one that's the Vine, um alternative so let's just chat about those two before we end our day together yeah yeah you know like um you know one of the things we try to do kind of around the office too is just kind of chat about hey what's you know what's happening what are new and so sometimes you know somebody will be like hey i'm gonna try this new thing and then you know that kind of like report back or whatever but you know um you know uh, about a month or two ago um facebook decided hey tiktok's growing really rapidly um I'm sure they decided this six months ago, but they ended up building their own app 
um, to compete with it. Um, it's fascinating because if you go download Lasso, you actually log in with Facebook credentials uh, to be able to see it. And if you're used to TikTok, it is an identical experience. I mean, it is almost literally identical in every way. Um, the button placements are all in the same place. They look the same. Uh, you could screenshot both and a lot of people would be confused as to which app you are in. Uh, so really interesting to see Facebook just kind of, I mean, just completely rip off uh, the competitor app. I mean, they, they ripped off a lot of components um, of Snapchat, but this is, this is identical. Um, so pretty interesting. Also interesting to see because uh, a lot of times Facebook has this sort of perception that they don't care much about your data. Um, but then we have this competitor TikTok coming in that uh, is basically Chinese owned. Um, who I, I would say the perception is much lower. Uh, the perception that they care about your data is far lower than Facebook's. So Facebook may end up really having a, a great race in that one um, by doing it this way. But one of the interesting things is they started TikTok or they started Lasso and uh, went after the Brazilian market first. So rather than going after the US, which is really competitive and costs a lot of money to get followers in, um, they started uh, marketing it heavily in countries where uh, they had a big enough social media following where Facebook is really popular. Facebook's really popular in Brazil. Um, and so they took that there and said, hey, let's grow a following here um, where we can get some density of followers so that they're all communicating. So when you log into Lasso, you'll see a lot of stuff uh, is not in English. Um, but it's getting them a base of posts and content because as you can imagine one of the biggest problems to starting a social platform is like there's no content <laughs> you know, there's there's no people there there's no content there and why would you go there so they kind of started there um which i think will, we'll see where it goes um right now it's not that interesting to me because the content um is is not that great yet they don't have enough users but uh, that could shift in a big hurry if facebook really decides to make it go that direction and then vine for folks that might not remember vine and uh its video format give a, a brief background and then the uh the new version that is now out in a vine like experience yeah, so I loved Vine back when it was out. Uh, Twitter bought a company uh, called Vine. Uh, I want to say, that I'm going to go six years ago or so, they bought Vine and basically shut it down shortly uh, after that. So it's it's been gone from us for probably about four years. Um, but, um, you know, Twitter bought this platform, uh, which was kind of the original uh, six-second videos. Um, so you could only, the, the longest video you could shoot on it was six seconds. You could do them as, uh, you know, stock photography if you wanted to. So you could kind of press down the button uh, for a short amount of time and do sort of stop action if you wanted to. You could upload some videos into it. A lot of creativity. A lot of people gained a huge amount of following on there. Uh, one of the original founders, I'm guessing that they had a uh, non-compete uh, with Twitter and must have just expired. So they just launched, uh, this past month launched um, Byte, uh, B-Y-T-E. Um, cool platform, it is Vine. If you miss Vine, jump on there and you'll feel like you're right at home again. Um, if you missed out on Vine, uh, jump on there, uh, check out um, their six second videos. Um, so one of the things I think it starts to teach us though is like, you know, the way you shoot video has changed because of these kinds of tools. So if you're using something like Instagram, you know, you might be uh, posting a similar style uh, than, but these platforms, because they're newer, kind of, they kind of help you be a little bit more cutting edge when you watch them. Right. The, uh, the last social network that launched that I thought I was an early mover on was Ello. I don't know if you jumped oh, yeah. on that bandwagon. Um, I, I just did a quick check of my screen to see if I still even have the app installed and sure enough, it's in my social icons, um, collection, but I don't know as if I've been back in there in quite some time, but, um, yeah, just being open to exploring where things are headed, um, you know, kind of ties back into what we talked about today. So very cool. Well, any, uh, any closing thoughts uh, before we formally adjourn and put a bow on what I think has been an awesome show? 
uh, hey, Eric, I, I think it's just a lot of fun. You know, uh, when we catch up, we kind of have these moments where it's like, hey, where are you learning? What am I learning? And I think that's just kind of fun to get to share on, you know, a platform like this. So I, I'm excited to get to share that. If you've got other questions for me or things like that, uh, my contact info is here. Um, always willing to, you know, just uh, just chat about things um, or um, you know, follow me on Twitter or whatever, and you know, we'll always have something crazy. Cool. Sounds good. Well, thanks again uh, to everybody that joined live. Thanks for the feedback and commentary and uh, tolerating some of the, the goofiness and uh, somewhat random thoughts. But I think overall, there's a really good theme here. And I know I was really looking forward to spending the hour with you and uh, it did not disappoint. So thanks for joining me on the show. Uh, that concludes today's episode. Uh, recording will be made available at freewebinarwednesdays.com. We're going to continue over the next several weeks the Digital Minds book tour, and we'll be inviting other fellow authors to join me here on the show, chatting more about some of the other digital marketing topics that uh, appear in our third edition of our Digital Minds book. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But until then, make it an awesome week. Thanks again for joining me, and we'll see everybody on freewebinarwednesdays.com. Take care. Bye-bye.